Okay, today we're going to discuss another strange bacterial discovery that most scientists did not even know existed up until a few years back. As a matter of fact, most of us have never even heard of these bacteria just because they're so bizarre and so unusual. And unusual because these bacteria, unlike every other bacteria, have a very strange ability to conduct electricity. They're basically kind of like natural wires. Which is why a few years back, when they were originally discovered, someone actually named them cable bacteria. A very bizarre type of electroconductive bacteria that, like so many things in biology, were discovered completely by accident. But in this video, we're going to be discussing this study by Anwar Hiralal and the team you see right here that recently discovered the most conductive of these bacteria that seem to be quite unique and potentially present us with actual physical applications we can use them for in the future. And so let's talk about the bacteria and the discovery in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with a very important part of history that reminds us how these discoveries are actually super important. And that's because some of the first discoveries when it comes to electricity and some of the first inventions of batteries were all actually made because of observations of the natural world. For example, the modern concept of batteries technically started because of this person, Luigi Galvani, an Italian physicist who believed he discovered something called animal electricity. And we even have his drawings to actually see what he was doing. He basically connected two different metals in a kind of a series and connected frog legs to these metals. And while to his surprise, the frog legs were moving. And specifically the muscles inside the legs of the frog were twitching when struck by electrical sparks from the simplified battery. And so he actually became the father of the concept known as galvanism. Generation of electricity inside biological organisms and the contraction convulsion of biological muscles as a result of the electric current. Except that we know that this was not entirely correct. As a matter of fact, it was another Italian, Alessandro Volta, who was then able to recreate this experiment without the use of any legs and instead by using conductive paper that was also able to detect the electric current by other means. And so he basically realized that the frog legs here were not really doing much and were not the source of this animal electricity. They were just an electrolyte or a conductor of electricity and technically also a detector. And later on Volta was basically the first to create an electrochemical cell or essentially the first battery. But nevertheless, the investigation of electricity here was entirely biological in origin. As we know today, within a few hundred years, it led to a lot of enormous discoveries with our entire technology now basically depending on something that started with a pair of frog legs. Even though the idea of galvanism was maybe not entirely correct. Okay, fast forward 250 years. And here we had a bizarre observation in 2010. It was reported in this study by Lars Peter Nielsen and his team. And in essence, it was an unusual conductance of sediment that suggested that for some reason the sediment that was measured in the water was way more electrically conductive compared to what was expected if this was just soil. And because in this case this electroconductivity was actually directly connected to oxygen consumption and also various chemical reactions inside the soil, this basically created a problem for many different models. And the conclusion in the study was that this electrical communication seems to be the result of some kind of a chemical and biological process and seems to add a new dimension to the knowledge of biogeochemistry and microbial ecology. Or essentially it implied that there was something mysterious going on, but nobody actually knew what. And eventually it was discovered that the only possible conductive structure that could have done this was a type of a filamentous bacteria referred to as Disulfobulbacea. Bacteria that uses different sulfites for breathing and the bacteria that was basically increasing the conductivity in the soil by literally creating individual wires. They sort of resembled something like this. Although in many cases this was actually visible to the naked eye and was actually several centimeters in length or basically an inch or two. And so by 2018 this was confirmed to be a new type of a bacteria, cable bacteria. Species that seem to live in various water sediments, usually within about 15 centimeters of the top layer. And as more and more types of this bacteria were discovered, they all turned out to be very similar. They were all filamentous or basically form these cable-like structures. They were all able to conduct electricity pretty well and essentially allowed for this long distance electron transport that would be impossible inside soil otherwise. And in terms of chemistry, they basically dramatically increased sulfide oxidation and oxygen and nitrate reduction, which dramatically changed a lot of these sediments, 
creating a lot of different metabolic reactions. And so in some sense, these bacteria were basically forming a kind of an electrical structure in a lot of different water sediments, literally representing a kind of a living wire. And biogeochemically, they dramatically increased sulfur, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen recycling, increasing it by over 40% to what was previously predicted. Moreover, they could also move just a little bit, repositioning themselves as needed in order to optimize these connections and to create better electrical reactions. Which honestly, when it was just discovered, was completely mind-blowing and nobody even knew how to react to this. But in a the soil, they created a very important reaction. They connected previously separated oxidation and reduction regions, which would suddenly make a lot of sediment underneath very chemically enriched. And eventually it was discovered that sometimes they're also connected to various aquatic plants. In many cases, they seem to be part of the root hairs and a part of what's known as the rhizosphere. And though they certainly do a lot of important stuff there, even today it's actually unclear exactly what their purpose is. We just know that they're very important in terms of geochemical properties. For example, they seem to be one of the main driving forces for the oxidation of iron, with many of these iron oxides binding to additional molecules and various compounds in order to create more complex stuff. Moreover, in some soils, they actually seem to prevent certain emissions, such as, for example, emissions of methane. In every location with cable bacteria, the methane emissions were very, very minimal. And as you might know, methane emissions are actually becoming a bit of a problem because methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. And so trying to understand exactly what these bacteria do and exactly how they do this is potentially way more important than we currently can even imagine. And so in this recent study, scientists discovered another species that seems to be even more extreme. Extreme because it's much longer, much more potent, and seems to actually form extremely strong electrical connections compared to other bacteria. And so here's what we know from this new study, and here's why it might be important in the future. First of all, like before, these are rod-shaped bacteria that create these very stable, very long filaments. In many cases, they were much longer than before, stretching for several centimeters. But surprisingly, this new bacterium was actually much better at conducting electricity, which researchers believe might be the result of its unique metabolic processes. Here it seems to be even better at this sulfide oxidation reaction within the upper layers of various aquatic sediments. But more specifically, the electrogenic metabolism inside this bacterium seems to involve two different types of cells. In essence, it's a kind of a multicellular filament with different cells responsible for different metabolism. The deeper sediment cells seem to perform sulfide oxidation and basically transfer electrons from there to the surface. And this is where other cells use oxygen or nitrate as the electron acceptor finishing the chain. Moreover, they're able to form extremely complex shapes and complex networks, sort of resembling a typical electrical grid. Except that obviously here, this is underground and technically underwater. And on top of this, they seem to contain various features on the surface, and they're also much, much thicker. Up to three times wider than other bacteria, containing various ridges on the surface, which seem to increase the overall conductivity. With the fibers inside containing nickel, which essentially literally turns them into electric cables, making these the most efficient bioelectric bacteria we've seen so far. Here's actually how it compares to other species, and essentially what some of these species used to create these electric reactions. But I guess the main question here is, can we actually use this for something practical, or is this just an interesting discovery in terms of biology? And well, to answer the practicality question, we have to take a look at something slightly different. MFCs, microbial fuel cells. This is actually a concept that was originally proposed back in 1900s by Michael Potter. He proposed using bacteria to generate electricity back in 1911. And although technically this idea is still in its experimental stage, one of the more intriguing experiments was conducted back in 2007, when scientists in Australia were able to generate electricity, carbon dioxide, and water by converting brewery wastewater, mixing it with various bacteria. In other words, they were able to treat wastewater, turning this into clean water, plus electricity. And so principle of MFCs relies on converting chemical energy to electrical energy through the use of bacteria. This could be especially useful in very remote conditions or extremely hostile conditions. And though so far this was only based on very small-scale experiments, we know in theory this has a lot of potential. Which of course takes us to this new discovery. This bacteria can dramatically increase the efficiency of these MFCs, especially if used in various aquatic conditions, 
On top of this, just like the Australian demonstration, this is a perfect use for different treatment facilities. Because this bacterium is so effective at transferring electrons, it can actually easily clean up pollutants in the water, removing a lot of harmful substances from the sediment, especially sediment contaminated by various hydrocarbons, for example, oil spills. And so technically this would be the perfect way to clean up any oil spill or any other contamination. Not to mention there are also propositions of using this in a lot of bioelectronics or basically biosensors and wearable devices that only require a little bit of energy. And so there's definitely a lot of potential for future use. As a matter of fact, one of the easiest ways to use this right now is to actually monitor the environment by seeing the amount of electricity produced by these bacteria. Because environments that have been polluted will produce different electrical response as these bacteria interact with those pollutants. Making this a really exciting discovery that though is still in its infancy, has the potential to transform our society even more in the next few decades. Exactly how though, only time will tell. And on that note, once we have some more discoveries or once someone else discovers something else about these cable bacteria, we'll come back and discuss this more in future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.